Good morning, everyone. Are you all fine today? And um, good day to everyone who's joining us in this worship service, not only here inside this building, but even to our brothers from all over the country, the Philippines. We have several of them. If you don't you know that we are on Facebook, Facebook Live, and every service at 9:30, we open it to the whole Philippines and even to the whole world. There are some individuals from Canada, Australia, from the Middle East who are joining with us every 9:30 service in the morning. And uh, to to them who are not here inside this building, good day to all of you. And it is our desire that. From Sunday to Sunday, Zikaik will be a blessing to everyone. The Lord is good, and He's been so good not only in the church but even to the, to every human beings that He created on earth. I have a confession to make this morning, and so this confession is not only for it's not only going to be heard by who are those who are here, but this is a confession to the whole world. Please don't tell anybody about this. <laughs> when I was a young boy, I lived in a barangay called Lai, and I was very known in that place. I think not because I was a good boy, but I was known in that place, especially during those days when I became an usher, usher not in the church, but usher of high alai and lastri. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I was not a pastor back then, <laughs> and. Um, I was, I was an usher and many people knew me. And um, every time I move around, they recognize me. And in fact, some of them won't call me JR, good morning. They would greet me. So that's, the, that's what they would ask me about. And I observed that in the early days of those moments when I was ushering, because I really make money back then. If you were an usher of a halai or last three before, uh, the overall, the total of the taya that you would gather, you would remit it to the, what is this? The one who is going to hold every peso that you would remit. And then you would receive 20% of your remittance. So every other day and every week, I would receive some amount of money because I was ushering. And I observed that in those early days, there were no a lot of people that would taya. Um, there were several reasons that were given to me. One of them would say, uh, I already have been uh, putting money into this gambling, but I have not won in the past, not even won. So maybe I'll, I'll get away, away of that. And some of those individuals that I have encountered before would tell me that uh, they are, um, I sense that this is not good. So this is gambling. So I will not, I will not get into it. Okay. So there were only a few of them. One day, one of those who taya with me won. He won 50,000 pesos. And I was very happy, you know, if somebody wins and it was through you, he will give you 20%. That's an SOP. So 50,000, I would have much money at a very young age. And added to that, the next time I would move around, I already had an advertisement. And I would even go to those individuals who refused to taya in the earlier moments. And I would tell them, don't you know that yesterday my neighbor won 50,000? And immediately I could see a change in their faces. Those individuals who would tell me, you know, it's really bad. It's not good. It's gambling. God forbids that. And whenever I told them, you know, yesterday somebody won 50,000, I immediately see a change in their faces. Really? How much did they put into that? Uh, just uh, 20 pesos or 100 pesos? Really? Okay, I'll try this time. I observed that it changed. And the reason why they changed was that they saw someone winning in the past. So even if they perceive it as gambling before, because somebody received already that much amount of money, their perspective has changed. And that is a very dangerous principle, or not a principle, but a dangerous situation where a believer could face. That whenever we perceive something as bad, and yet when we begin to see the result 
of that something which is we consider as bad, it would lure us to do the same. I'll give you another example. Many of us are drivers here. You drive your own car, motorcycle, or your tricycle. Sometimes when you are just right at the traffic light, maybe around 100 meters away from crossing, and you follow the line, and then suddenly, it's about to turn green, and you saw some individuals in front of you counter, count, doing the counter flow. And you would try to hold yourself from doing so, and that when you turn your back, there were several individuals also doing the same so that they could catch the green light. Many of us are doing that, right? Why does that happen? Because even if we desire to stay on our lane, and yet when we look at other people not reprimanded doing so, they are able to cross, then somehow we would say, why don't I do the same? Why don't I do the same? Even if it's wrong, I will just do the same because I want to save time. I don't want to be caught here in this traffic jam. We are lured to do even what is bad because we look at the result and somehow we think that it can justify even if the means is wrong. That's why the title this morning is Lured by Result. Lured by Result. And there is a subtitle on that saying, The end does not always justify the means. Some individuals would say, As long as it's going to make me something, it made me achieve what is desired, then I'll do it even if it's bad. But for a believer, whether, it, whether the result would make you good, better, or even bad, if the means is wrong, it is always wrong. That is why the psalmist warned us about this. Let us look at Psalm 37, 1 to 4. Here is a warning, a very realistic scenario that was given to us by David himself. Psalm 37, 1 to 4. I'll read from the, N from the NASB. Maybe it's there. Okay? 1 to 4 of 37 Psalm. Do not fret because of evil doers. Be not envious toward wrongdoers, for they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. May the good Lord bless the reading of His Word. Now let's scan this passage and there are things that we could really see here that are very important and applicable in our day-to-day -day living. And the first thing that I want us to take note is in verse 1. It says there, Do not fret because of evildoers. Be not envious toward wrongdoers. This is a parallelism, a synonymous parallelism in the book of Psalm employed by David. And it tells us what we should not be. Okay? This first verse tells us what we should not be. We should not fret because of evildoers. And we should not envy towards wrongdoers. Why is he saying this? As I have mentioned earlier, this is a reality that even believers, even the followers of Jesus experience. That when there is a wrong thing being done, even if we know that it is wrong already, and when we look beyond, we see the result of it, something that we perceive as good, we are tempted to do the same. Diba? Eh... Pastor, absent ako. O, absent ka nga. Pero hindi ako absent sa office. Bakit? May nag-time in sa akin. Di ba masama yun? O, hindi masama. Hindi ko gagawin yun. Okay. So, hindi ginawa. On the next, pagdating ng sweldo, ba't kulang sa akin? Sa kanya, absent siya. Pero, kompleto pa rin. You see? Sa'yo, because you followed and do what is right, when you were absent, you really did not ask someone to time you in. That's the right thing to do. And yet, you have a friend who was absent with you, but at the end of the month, his salary is complete. Yours is not. Then it's going to lure you to do the same on the next month. Lured by result. This is a reality that confronts every one of us. And that is why David was giving a warning through this song. Do not fret because of evildoers. Be not envious toward wrongdoers. Verse 1 tells us what we should not be. Let us look at verse 2. Verse 2 also tells us that we, why we should not be. 
for they will quickly wither or wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb. Maybe you're saying, my neighbor has been so rich for many years already and I have seen how evil or wicked their ways were. I know where they are getting the money. It's an illegal transaction that always do. And that why are still they prospering? You know, this issue is not only today. This issue even happened in the Old Testament. Habakkuk had the same complaint. He prayed to the Lord. He looked at Israel who was really almost being destroyed, almost ruined already. And then he looked at the other nations who were wicked, worshipping Baals, worshipping the gods of the pagans. And this is what he saw. He saw them prospering. And he looked at Israel. We are God's children, right? We are following the Torah. We are following the orders of the Lord. And why are we like this? And when he began to look at the other nations around, they were prospering. And he asked a question that many of us probably asked already before. What was the question? Lord, when he, said, when he prayed, why does the wicked seem to prosper? Have you not asked that question before? I am a good person. I follow Jesus. I take the Word of God seriously every day in my life. But why am I like this? Maybe I'm better than other people, but when I look at the social status of my neighbors, why are they having these expensive cars? Why do they have houses? When in fact, my house is filled with stars even during daytime. Kasi pag tingala mo ganang daming butas. Why, why is it like this? Have you asked the same question before? Lord, why does the wicked seem to prosper? And David is giving us a warning about this because once we begin seeing what other people around us are possessing, even if we know that they are being done in a wrong way, we will be lured if we are not careful. That is why today, even if the government is really on a very serious way of dealing drugs, dealing with against drugs, it's still there. Why? It's an easy money. You just have a little portion of it. You could sell that for a very huge amount. So it's an easy money. Even if those individuals, some of them are interviewed, do you really plan to be in here? Actually, sir, I did not like this work. But uh, I have friends who are doing so well in their lives. So looking at their status and my condition, then I better engage into such a thing of business so that I would have the same life that they have. Lured by result. Who would love selling drugs when you're putting your life in danger? Nobody would love that. But what are they looking forward? Not the user, the seller. They're looking forward for the money. The result can lure even a believer. But the Bible is also telling us why we should not be like that. Because their lives are very short. You go to the field, you see a very green grass. During rainy season, they would grow and multiply. It turns so green, so beautiful. But you wait for the summer to come. Gradually, they will turn brown, they will disappear, and they will all die. That's how the life of evildoers is com compared. And this comparison is done within the perspective of eternity. Maybe we are thinking, my life is long. I have been existing for 40 years. I have been existing for 60 or 70 or 90 or even 100 years. That's long if you take it from the perspective of your lifespan. But if you look at that 100 years, even if you're 100 years old, if you look at that 100 years within the perspective of eternity, it's just very short. Eternity is very long. And what David is trying to tell us today is this. Are you going to give up your years of existence on earth for eternity? Or you are going to give up eternity for your existence, existence on earth? It's like that. So he's telling his readers, the listeners of the song, be very careful not to fret and be envious about them. Somebody mentioned about the difference between envy and jealousy. Have you thought about these two words? Are they different? Envy, he said, is that you saw someone owning something 
and you want to get that something or you want the person to lose it. That's, what you, that's envy. But jealousy is that you own that something and you don't want someone else to get it. That is why for a husband and wife, the husband would be jealous if somebody is luring the wife. Or on the other way around, the wife would be jealous if there is a woman luring the husband. Why? Why jealous? Because that's yours. He is yours. She is yours. And you're jealous because you don't want that someone to get him or her. But envy is that you saw someone possessing it and you desire to get it or you want him to lose it. Because kung hindi naman lang ako maligaya, dapat walang ibang masaya. Dapat ganun. Hindi ganun eh. <laughs> That's envy. And the, the, the psalmist is very careful about this because he saw people around him, not only individually but corporately. That is why when you look at when you look at verse 3 later, I, I would explain further later, he said, dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Why did he say that? Because the Israelites, they were following God, God's children sila, and they look at themselves, why are we in this kind of condition? God, when you brought us out of Egypt, you said that you are going to bring us in a land flowing with milk and honey. But we are here now, why, are, why is this place filled with rocks? Why is there a scarcity of water? Why don't we see green fields around us? And when they look at the neighboring countries, they have much resources. They are richer than us. And they began thinking, pwede kayang mag-transfer tayo ng ibang lugar? And David is telling them, God brought you here. God gave you this land. Do not go to another place. Later, I'll explain further about that matter. Envy is really very dangerous. That is why we are being warned there. You know what? I, I remember a, a fable told by D.L. Moody. He talked about an eagle. Eagle is a kind of bird that is very admirable. I think the bird that can fly to the highest altitude compared to other ver birds, right? And it can even look at the sun without being glared by, it, by, by the light. That's how admirable an eagle is. But one day, here is an eagle who flies so high. But he noticed that there is one another eagle who can fly higher than him. And every day, he tried to outfly the bird, the other eagle. He wanted to be stronger, faster, and more resilient even to the wind and other things up there. And what he did, he had a practice and training every day. And at that moment, when he felt that he was ready, he challenged this bird. And they fly higher and higher, higher than the clouds that you can see. But when they were up there, this eagle noticed that he could not fly higher than that. And he saw the other eagle just soaring higher and higher and higher. Because of that, he felt envy inside him. And what happened next was this. One day, they were just there in the forest. He saw a hunter. And then he made a deal with the hunter. He said to the hunter, Do you see that eagle up there? He is an eagle. And now he's pointing to another eagle. Did you see him? He flies so high. But you know what? I think your bow and arrow can reach him. You think you can reach and kill him? And the hunter said, I think so. But the feather of my arrow would not be good enough to reach that high. Ah, sabi ng eagle, oh, walang problema. Bumunot siya ng isang feather, oh. And so the hunter aimed at the eagle who's flying up there. After a few seconds, he released the arrow. It did not hit the eagle. And he said, I'm sorry, I miss it. Here's another one. Here's another one. Naubos na yung arrow ng hunter. Ubus na rin yung balahibo niya. Sabi ng hunter, my family is hungry. And I did not have anything. When he looked around him, oh, there is someone eh, parang dressed chicken na. 
And this eagle who was in views of that other eagle could no longer fly. Ah, hindi na nahirapan ang hunter. Gihimulbula na daan. Mag-init na lang kag tubig. Ah, okay na kayo. Butangan lang tayo yung ugtang lad. Wa na. Goodbye, eagle. But here's the thing. This is what the Almudi said at the end of the fable. If you are envious of others, the one you will hurt the most by your actions will be yourself. Who's going to be hurt at the end? It's the one envying. That is why David was giving a warning to the people of Israel. Do not be envious of the things around. And why? Because the dangerous thing on this matter is that when you are envious about them, other than that you would like to get what they have, you would disobey your God. Why did I say that? Let's look at verse 3. Verse 3 says like this. Next slide, please. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Now, I want us to take note of those letters in uh, that, those letters that are bigger. Trust in the Lord, do good. Now, there are two verbs there, you trust and do. You should not understand this from the other, away from the other. You should understand them together. Trust in the Lord and do good. Why did he say do good in relation to trust in the Lord? Now, as I have mentioned earlier, it was God who brought them to Canaan, the promised land. And it was God who told them, I am going to bless you there. Okay? And I want you to keep on doing good while you are there, even if you are surrounded by pagans, even if you are surrounded by people who do not belong to me, I am going to bless you. And don't be envious about them. Because the tendency is this. Even if you are a follower of Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit, right? You have the Spirit of God, and you are more inclined to do what is good because you have the Spirit in you compelling you to do what is good. But the problem is this. Even if you desire to do what is good, when the people around you are doing what is bad, and at the end of the day, you see that they are having better than what you have, that's going to lure you to do the same. The same warning that I have mentioned earlier. So, Doing good here is something that we should be intentionally doing because it's gonna, yung result ng iba, kahit wicked things yun, it's gonna lure us. So if you are there following a line and somebody went ahead of you who just arrived 10 minutes ago and ikaw nandun ka na 3 hours nakapila, what's the good thing to do? You stay on the line. Eh yung nauuna sa'yo, may envy ka nun eh. But sila in entertain sila eh. Ten minutes pa lang sila dito, sila agad. Ako three hours. It's gonna lure you to react. It's gonna lure you to do the same. So that is why the psalmist is very careful. Do not fret because of evildoers. Be not envious toward wrongdoers. Trust in the Lord and do good. This is the prescription given to us by David. Trust in the Lord and do good. In other words, even if, there are, even if they are doing things that are seemingly bad and they are getting good results, if that is bad, it would always be bad. And you should stay on doing what is good because you are trusting the Lord. Nandaya yung office mate ko, kaya na-promote agad siya. Anong gusto mo ngayon? Mandadaya ka rin next time para ma-promote ka? The Bible is telling us, to do what is good. Just keep on doing what God tells you to do. Don't do anything silly. Don't do monkey business so that you would reach that level because that has something to do with the issue of trust. This is the beauty of the Scriptures. It tells us what we should do every day. That is why what we should be, look at verse 3 and verse 4. And there is a further, further and more specific prescription here. He says, Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. If you delight yourself in the Lord, trusting in the Lord and doing good would not be difficult. I tell you. Now, the question is, what do we mean when we say delight? What did he mean when he said delight? Today, when we look at the dictionary, the dictionary would tell us that uh, it is something that would give you happiness or joy. If you delight on something, meaning to say that something gives you joy in the heart. It makes you happy. Okay? 
when I am delighting on something, I would look at it, stare at it for, for minutes, and enjoy just watching it. If I'll get a, for example, a, a new shoes, you buy the shoes, you go home, what do you do when you arrive home? You open it up again, right? And you look at it. Kuma na ba kaglantaw ato dito sa tindahan? Ito lang tag yun. Ang uban, suton, bahalag, matulog sa gabi. Basta bagong sapatos. You look at it again. Why? It gives you happiness. It gives you joy. You delight on that matter. If you have a new car, right? You bring it before, before buying it. You check everything. You look at the wheels. If you can just look under the mats, you would see everything. Look at the engine. You look at it, everything. And by the time it's delivered to your house, there you go again. You keep on watching it again. And then, pag mata sa buntag, awa na, di na maman sinog asawa. Ito, sige, trapo-trapo sa bagong sakit. The motorcycle is new. Sige, balik-balik, uglantaw. You always look at it. Why? Because you are delighted on it. And in this sense, when the word delight is used, this is how we could introduce the word delight here. I want you to look at your seatmate. What do you see? Look in the eye. Look in the eye. Gimuta, siguro yung katawan. From that distance where you are seated from your seatmate, maybe you could not see really what's inside the eye of your seatmate. But if you get closer, what you would see at the very black portion of the eye of your seatmate. Wala mo siguro yung blue-eyed person rin, no? What do you see at the very eyeball of that person? You would see your reflection, right? When the Bible uses the word delight, God is telling us that He delight Himself on us and we delight ourselves on Him. It's a relationship actually, an intimate relationship. A husband and wife could really delight with each other because they could see each other from its eyeball. In other words, from a very close perspective, they would see each other and they find joy seeing each other. It's very similar with the term, the apple of the eye. When I delight myself with the kids, my children, I would watch them play, I would really put down my phone and watch them and just laugh and at them. And that's how you delight on matters. And in this case, David is telling us, delight yourself in the Lord. In other words, in contrast to the earlier statements in verse 1, what happens in verse 1 is this. You fret and you envy because you see others' possessions, you see others' positions, you see others' achievements, you see others acquiring things on life. You envy, you fret because you see things like that. And the suggestion of David is this. Instead of seeing those things, you begin to delight yourself in the Lord, meaning to say, in your eyes, begin to see what glorifies God. And that would happen when you begin to trust Him and continue to do good. So doing good and trusting Him becomes easier if you delight yourself in the Lord. That the way you look at things around you is entirely changed because there is a God perspective in your eyes. That person is acquiring much in this world, but the way he did it is in, a vi- in an evil way. I would not follow what he does because my God is faithful. I'll just wait for His blessings to come upon me. If there are good things offered to you, do it in a nice way. But if it's in a wicked way, refuse. Do not envy. Do not fret. Because from the perspective of eternity, God is looking at us and our life is just very short. And I hope we would never exchange eternity for our luxury in our existence on earth. Here is the last statement, a capsule of all the things that I have mentioned. Next slide, please. When the wicked seem to prosper, the righteous delight in the will of the blesser. When the wicked seem to prosper, the righteous delight in the will of the blesser. Do not envy them. Wait for the time when they will envy you. 
And they would say, I have this much, but I just do not know why you are, more ha or why you are happier than I am. I have this much, but I just do not know why you are more contented than I am. It only happens when you delight yourself in the Lord. Don't get me wrong. I am not against rich people. Rich people are God's blessing to the work of the kingdom on earth also. They play a great partnership with us in many ways. Especially right now, I am directly connected with Ebenezer. Ebenezer's dormitory for the ladies, it's not livable anymore. You go there, somebody went inside, nalusot ang tiil. So Ebenezer is praying right now that there would be people who would be willing to support for a new building so that we can build a dormitory for the ladies. Who are these people helping? Everyone, even the rich are sending. So I'm not against rich people. But what I'm trying to say here is that do not envy others, especially those earn through wickedness. If you earn what you have through righteousness, then that's a blessing from God. But if you earn what you have through wickedness, be warned. That's very dangerous. And if you don't have what you desire right now yet, you keep on trusting God. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Amen to that? Let's bow down our heads for prayer. Father, we thank You for Your goodness. Thank You for reminding us once again. And help us, Lord God, to delight in You. Because the way we see things on earth is entirely different from how other peoples do. And we pray that You would continue to make us closer to You, closer and closer, and that we would experience fully who You are in our lives. And I pray that as Your people would delight themselves on You, bless them indeed and grant the desires of their hearts. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus, and everybody will say, Amen and Amen. To God be the glory.